Hey there boys and girls, like Skill Figure here, and welcome back to another Battlefield 4 video. So today we have another episode of How to Recon in the series where I'm giving you some recon tips. Today's topic would be um, scopes and attachments, and yeah, I would say let's get right into this. So first of all, um, let's talk about scopes real quick. You can see me using the 6x scope right here in this gameplay. Um, we basically can choose from three different categories. We have the close range scopes, the medium range and the long range scopes. Um, 6x being the smallest long range scopes with the lowest magnification level, the highest one is the 40x. Personally what I can suggest from those would basically be the 6x and the 8x. Those are the two um, I like the most due to having mill dots and having a, I would say, a reliable magnification level for basically close and long range engagements. Of course if you're only a long range sniper guy, something like the um, 40x or 20x might be better. Um, the chevron scope can be fi quite fun too, although I'm using it only at closer range engagements. I'm not quite sure, probably because the chevron scopes aren't allowing for um, too much precision, uh, too much precision as the mill dots are doing. Besides that, we again have the um, low power and the medium power scopes. Many grass recon players like to use those, and I can understand why because it's a lot easier to adapt with them in close core situations. However, personally, I'm not a big fan of them. Um, I think if you want to have like the tricks of the trade and you want to be uh, effective at all distances, you're really putting yourself at a disadvantage because you're um, with such a low magnification level, you're unable to um, hit the head anymore at really long distances. And even though I'm playing as an aggressive recon most of the time, I still like to counter snipe my uh, enemy sniper opponents like 300 meters plus. And you would definitely have problems with something like a red dot or so. So I would definitely tr uh, suggest you the 6x or the Adux, those are my two favorite scopes. Besides that, we also have a, a tons, tons of attachments. Starting out with the Candid Iron Sights, which, which is um, a nice, neat idea actually, because you can have a, a big zoom scope or a high magnification level zoom scope, and then you have the Candid Iron Sights for close course engagements. I'm not using that too often, but um, for some people it works. The only drawback or well negativity is that you kind of always have to switch back and forth between those two, which can be annoying. Same goes for the var variable zoom scope, because the more you're uh, messing with your scope's um, magnification level, the more you are messing with your aim and your brain keeps like trying to adapt to it and you will just throw off your aim and you won't be hitting the targets as good as before. Besides that, we have a flashlight and a tactical light, which is basically um, just blending enemies. There's um, little to no use to it, in, just from my point of view. It can be um, interesting if there's a really dark room, but in most situations you won't really need them, and the blending effect is al isn't also like that great to help you. Besides that, we have a red and a green laser sight, as well as the tri-beam laser. Those are um, like um, benefiting your hip fire accuracy. Of course, um, if you're playing as an aggressive recon player and you want to always be close up, sometimes you don't have the time to ADS and then the hip fire is the only thing you can rely on. And um, yeah, the laser sight basically makes it a little bit more reliable, so I would definitely suggest you guys to try it out. There's also the laser light combo, which is essentially a combination of a um, flashlight and a laser sight. You can switch between those two. Next up, we would have the rangefinder. And at first, I wasn't like. Well, I, I thought it wouldn't be too really necessary because you got the PLD, but if you're not doing the long range sniping, it's actually quite effective because you can see the zeroing as well as the range or the distance, and like that, it's really easy to snipe at long range um, or just the long range targets. Besides that, we have a suppressor which um, will not decrease your damage, however, it will most often or more often not cut the bullet velocity almost in half. For example, the um, interventions bullet velocity is 620 meters per second. With a suppressor, it's only 330 meters per second, which is almost half. And yeah, it increases the drop so much and makes the bullet so slow that I really would not suggest trying it out if you're not running like it really close up, for example, with the FYJS in close quarter situations. Besides that, we also have a muzzle brake which really is only a drawback in all categories kind of so it um, it reduces the recoil which is not really important with a bolt action rifle but it decreases the accuracy which is really important with a bolt action rifle so there's really no um, it makes no sense to use a muscle brake on a bolt action we have a flash hider also as well which is basically doing the same thing as a suppressor but you can still hear a sound and it still show up on the minimap but without the flash so it can be a little bit helpful um, on battle lock it does not say near does on synthic that it's uh, affecting accuracy in any way but i felt like it still does but i i'm not completely sure i would love to hear you guys opinion on it but it, it kind of seems to be one of the things that really hasn't been figured out yet 
Um, besides that, we have the two big ones left that would be the bipod and the stray pull bolt. Um, pretty self explanatory with a bipod, you can just deploy your weapon somewhere on a on, a, on the ground or on a box or something. And you don't want, uh, and then you don't have to hold the breath anymore. With the straper bolt, you can um, already start rechambering the bolt while still being scoped in, which uh, seems to make the uh, rechamber time faster, but only because it already starts rechambering right after the shot, and not just like after zooming out. And yeah, um, those are the attachments that are available for the recon kit. Um, as I've said, um, most of them, I'm, for example, I'm always using the laser side with a six times or eight times zoom scope and a straight pull bolt. Those are the, the things that I'm using, those are the things I found to be useful. And most of the time, as I've said before, if you're going for long range sniping, something like a bigger zoom scope and a bipod or the rangefinder can really help you out. But yeah, I think that's pretty much all for now, so I hope you enjoyed the video and let's go figure out.